Welcome, this is Hugh Massey from DNA Behaviour. In this session, I'm going to address family dynamics and how we use our financial DNA reports to help see the differences within a family unit from the perspective of managing succession planning. Now the concept of succession planning is broad and will be different in every family. Sometimes it in involves a family business. Sometimes it just involves the investment assets. It can also involve uh, the passing on of family possessions, legacy, the family meaning. All of that is uh, uh, wrapped up together in, in different emphases, depending on the family unit and where the family is at. But a lot of the principles are the same in the sense that there are different behaviours within the family that need to be navigated and understood by everybody in the family if the wealth, uh, which can be looked at in the broader uh, context of uh, not just the financial wealth, but, but also the um, spiritual wealth, if you want to call it that, of the family, the human capital of the family, uh, is passed on. So. What we'll do in this session is break down uh, the use of our reports. The, so we'll look at the, uh, the financial behavior report. It's our one page report. We've covered this before. The uh, financial DNA uh, one page factor report, the comparison report, and then the group reporting uh, to, to bring the whole family unit together to see the differences. Again, I emphasize that it is, it is managing the behavioral differences that is the key to success here. And that's important for the family members to understand each other, but it's also important for the advisory team to, to understand the family members. And often the advisors get very close to the families and they're almost part of the family or, and part of the family dynamics, particularly if they're close to one of the family members or, or a number of the family members. And so that's important to understand uh, where their behavior is uh, contributing to the family dynamics as well. So let's take the Jones family as, as one scenario. And uh, Tom and Kathy Jones are in their early 60s. They have a family business uh, that's profitable. They have various assets. They are inheritors themselves of the business and of some of the assets. They've made money along the way by being uh, astute business-wise. They've known each other all their life. They've got three children and they're looking to pass on the wealth and, and create the right structure to involve the children in the business. Um, in, in, in this setting, Elizabeth actually already works in the business. Eric doesn't want to be part of the business, uh, even though his father uh, would like him to be. And Christina wants to come into the business. The, the framework that I approach uh, family situations from uh, is the same each time. And then depending on the situation, there are areas that get emphasized more. Um, but this family is reasonably close-knit, but every family has uh, some desire for entertainment. They want to have a good time together. They want to go on trips, whether that's uh, together or individually. Um, everybody wants some excitement, and usually that's got to be fueled with money. Um, there is some entitlement that comes. People have uh, in the family belief systems that they're entitled to something, whether it's Elizabeth because she's been working in the business longer, or Eric might have, feel like he has an entitlement uh, because he's not in the business and he's been uh, uh, given less or promised something. Uh, this builds up over a long time and, and can come from uh, very early life conversations. People remember things uh, uh, and sometimes it's little things um, that their parents say or even a grandparent says. And then there's expectations as well. They've got expectations for their life. They've got expectations for what the family is going to do for them. This is a reality. Uh, you know, no one's perfect here. And it would be very, uh, few, it would be very few family members or per persons that don't have uh, any of the four E's uh, inbuilt into them in some way. So in this situation, the, the parents want to retire, but they want to provide for their children uh, equitably. They want to communicate uh, their, their values and uh, to seek a common ground uh, for, for the, um, family, uh, the family unit. The way I look at it is uh, 
in, in these five areas here, I break it down into relationship continuity. Most times that's the priority. Uh, everybody wants a harmonious family unit where, where, where the test is, can you sit down for Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner or some family occasion and not throw rocks at each other? And, 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 it, reason, and it be uh, you know, a nice experience. Uh, values continuity is often important for families to pass down the values, their legacy, their belief systems, um, their, their position in the community. And then, and then, the, and then it's more the, uh, the rational side, looking at business continuity, the financial continuity, depending on the family. Sometimes it's, it's better to keep the family business together. It's, it's profitable as part of the family identity. Uh, other times the kids are not interested in it or the business has got to the end of its life and it's best to be, to be sold. The financial continuity gets down to, you know, does the family keep its buying power of investment assets together in, in, you know, inside uh, trust structures and, and investment structures, or does it start to, to split the family um, assets up? You know, and there are varying schools of that of uh, a tighter family will be one that's a little bit more codependent um, or interdependent on each other. And uh, there are other families that believe in independence more. Uh, so, you know, there are, there are theories about that and, 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 and how far that goes for each family. It really depends on the family unit and what's at stake. Uh, one area to keep the family together and to uh, be interacting in a meaningful way is philanthropy. Uh, that if you can get the family uh, together on, on common ground, philanthropically, um, with some meaning and purpose, you know, for example, that the family will give money to education or to, to a sporting team or to universities or do something you know, around cancer research, or whatever it is uh, that, that has meaning, that, that, that's the bonding point. And so philanthropy has often been seen as the way uh, to, to keep the family together and to be communicating uh, about something positive. What's important to bring out is that historically, money's not been talked about in families, it's been taboo. And money does bring up, uh, you know, a series of emotions. And really, in a way, how money gets dealt with in the family is a reflection of the personalities in the family. And as a reflection of the emotions, it can also be a reflection of uh, the state of the relationships in the family. So the more dysfunctional that the financial behaviour in the family overall, probably is a reflection of the level of dysfunction in a family. Now, every family has dysfunctions. It's just a reality. Uh, that when you have different uh, human beings together, the world isn't perfect. And uh, I think sometimes people uh, carry shame around thinking that their family is, 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 is worse in that department than, than others. The reality is uh, that's not true. Even families where it appears there is the appearance of, of, of great financial success, there's usually some dysfunction. Um, and, it's, and again, it's a reflection of the, uh, the state of the family relationships. Uh, and the family values. Work can be done on that. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about it. But also in, in creating a will traditionally, and this has somewhat been driven by the lawyers and the accountants, that a will has been a reasonably rational process. When I say the will, the overall estate planning, and it's not being talked about. And the problem that, 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 that comes from that is that when, uh, that ultimate event comes where the wealth is passed on because somebody dies and the, re and the will is read and the children, for example, read the will and start to understand it, somebody's hurt and that's when the litigation starts. So I, I am a big in encourager of there being family conversations while everybody's alive uh, and healthy. And if there's some bad news to deliver or, or, or mum and dad decide that the children aren't going to get all the assets, it's better to, it's better to say that uh, while they're alive and for, for there to be a buy-in to that rather than uh, they find out about it later. Or if there is some iniquity uh, in, in the estate planning, it's better it's, it's better it's known. But also the parents have got to realise, or the, the, the providers or passers down of the wealth have got to realise the decisions they make are impacting their children's lives. And some degree, the children have a say in that. Yes, they might have great wealth, but to understand the impact of that on their children's lives is important. 
So this can be also be a very uh, informing and healing process as well to have these conversations, even if it's not easy to do. But what I would say is a principle of life. And I say this is, a this is also a principle of leadership. And this is in, to some degree leadership as well. Clarity creates trust. And so the more clarity there is, the more trust that there will be. So let's look at the family and, and what I do in, in these processes and facilitating the family is I want the, each family member to understand their behavior. And this starts at the top of the family. Uh, so in this case, it's gonna start with um, uh, Tom Jones, the dad. Uh, in fact, it, it just, just for clarity, in this case, in the case study, in real life, it was his wife who inherited the money, but, but, but Tom is the, uh, somewhat the, the, the driver in the family. Uh, he's got an initiator uh, style and he is the president and CEO of the family business. And we can see here that uh, with the one page financial behavior report, uh, we can get some insights about Tom. So he's an initiator, he's quite fast paced, he's entrepreneurial, uh, he built up the business, he's a risk taker. There, uh, not a lot of desire for a relationship with, uh, um, with advisors, but also, uh, you know, within the family unit, he's not going to be the, the relational one. He's going to be more the results driven um, uh, parent. So he will be looking at uh, the estate planning as to what, it, what does it mean financially. Um, from a financial planning management perspective, he's quite strong. He's wealth creation driven and a uh, fairly high degree of financial emotional intelligence. So he's going to make rational decisions. And here from a sort of decision-making style, he likes to uh, invest in new things, pursue new ideas, brainstorm. So he's open, he's open to new ways of thinking and mental accounting. So he puts his money into buckets uh, and, and, and could be quite rigid with that. So the conversation for him in, in the family dynamics situation uh, or setting has got to be uh, out of the box thinking. He wants to brainstorm uh, and he's going to want some time to reflect. So that's his style. Then we look at his one page uh, factor report and we can see um, we can see here uh, that he's you know quite take charge, he's fairly reflective, quite um, quite fast paced there, um, spontaneous quite driven towards goals and then very creative there. And again, just so that uh, you understand the scoring, his, his score of 86 here means he's high on risk behavior. So that's greater than 70% of the population. That, that, that's why he gets a high score. Um, and he's got a low score there uh, on financial relationship management. Um, low scores are under 30%. So that's quite strong there. So any scores over 70 and under 30 are strong. So let's take a look at Kathy Jones, his, his spouse. And we start to see that she's different. Her risk behavior is a lot lower. His was 86, hers is 34. Uh, she's more relational there. Financial planning management strong, so she's good with money. Wealth, wealth building motivation is quite strong. So what we've got is a, is a reasonable power couple here that have been running the, the, the family business that they inherited from Kathy's business and you know, are quite driven towards wealth. She could be a little bit more emotional uh, in making decisions. And then from a pattern bias perspective, she's gonna be quite structured. She's gonna follow patterns, uh, follow the data, um, and there could be some regret in, in her decision making uh, if, 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 you know, if, if she makes the wrong choice. And so that will sort of color her mind a little bit. Uh, could, have I, could I have made more? Could I have done better? Um, so there could be at times buyer's regret to some degree with, with decisions, which could lead her to not making a decision at times as well. And then from a communication perspective, she, you know, she's going to want accuracy and detail, structure. Uh, and, and then the environment to be a lot more relaxed. So this is a typical situation of uh, husband and wife that got married uh, younger in life, which they did, they're quite opposite. 
uh, in style and that's got to be navigated. They will have different uh, financial attitudes that comes from that. What we find is that 70% or so of uh, couples that uh, um, meet and marry earlier in life tend to be pretty, pretty uh, different. Opposites attract. So this is her one page factor report. So again, we're, we're you know, looking at the eight factors here and the 24 sub factors and looking for uh, some of the stronger behaviors that might be influencing uh, her decision-making. Interestingly, she's quite uh, group orientated. So this kind of process involving the family unit, bringing them together to make decisions and to build their future together uh, is quite important to her. Uh, because she, she's going to want a collaborative uh, process. So she would be a driver in the family unit to going through a family meeting and having a series of family meetings and involving her children. Uh, she'll be quite outspoken and here you can see the structure and the, and, the, and the need for details. So she wants sort of the family estate planning to be wrapped up into, uh, you know, uh, a parcel, and put a, a bow ribbon put on it to be, you know, tightly managed. Uh, and orderly and not, and not feel out of control. So again, we can see, uh, we just use this slide here just to um, make it easier to see the detail um, there and understand the scoring. So that's the pattern bias and, the, and uh, we can see here the, the lower, you know, just to emphasize the lower risk behavior with her, uh, but she's quite otherwise financially structured. And then Elizabeth Jones is the, is the elder daughter. And what we can immediately see is she's an influencer style uh, of, of person. So quite big in the room will want to be controlling, her opinion uh, will be important, she'll want that heard. She's going to want to drive the family business forward. Uh, and, you know, this is, this is a fairly normal style for, for a leader. Uh, not that, you know, leaders are always influencers, leaders can come from any style, but there, there will be a pretty strong desire to lead. She can take risks. So she'll want to push the business forward, grow it, not that relational, um, not that structured, which is important. So this is where she could butt up against her parents who are more uh, structured and they, and they would be watching that. So this would come out here. So they would, you know, in the, in the family st structuring going forward, there will need to be some governance around a decision-making, particularly in the business. And then she's quite driven to create wealth. And this is her one page uh, factor report. So we can start to see pretty strong behaviors there on the commanding and people, which is the outgoing influencing nature. Um, not that patient, she'll make, want to make quite, quite quick decisions. And then down here, interestingly, on the pioneering, very goal driven. So given the chance with the business, she could really want to push it forward, but uh, her creativity is lower. So she's more anchored. So she would push forward quite hard with goals with what she knows. But whether she's going to uh, vision the future and see that uh, um, the business might need to be run a different way to survive in the future uh, might be a challenge. You know, so um, we you know we don't want uh, the the Kodak type situation coming into play here, but that's a risk. Uh, and if she she gets wise counsel from outside of uh, you know different ways to to pursue the business. And this is just coming from her anchored, uh, more anchored uh, nature. Then there's the middle brother uh, or middle child, Eric, uh, who's different personality. He lives in a different city to the rest of the family now, uh, highly educated, and he's got his own life and career. Uh, he's a facilitator profile, um, which means that, you know, he can, he can make decisions on his day, but He's more about uh, uh, minimizing family conflict, keeping, you know, keeping away from those issues. Uh, in, in real life, he's a, a business trainer. So he likes facilitating people, teaching people. Uh, so he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's got a softer nature to, to him. And uh, he's less of a risk taker. His um, financial uh, relationship management uh, is 
um, sort of in, in, in the middle there, less driven, although creating some wealth is important for him as well, but, but a more moderate uh, style to his siblings and doesn't want to be involved in the family business. So you can start to see that coming out there. And a lot more of his style is middle range, uh, which is often how it, uh, the cards fall for a facilitator. But there again, group orientated, wants to be involved with the family unit. Uh, pretty middle through here, then the rest of, then down here, he's quite anchored. So again, he's not, he's not the creative individual, He's just going to, you know, work uh, with what he knows, live in the way he knows. And then Christina Jones, the, the younger child, um, she wants to be involved in the business. And uh, this is her uh, risk behavior. So she's quite cautious. She's different to her older sister, but this is where sort of there's a, a competition that comes with a sister. And her older sister is an engager. Sorry, her older sister is an influencer, which is here, and she's an engager. So there's a, comp there's a competition for the limelight. They're both outgoing. They're both people orientated. They both want to look good. They need to be in the spotlight. Um, and as we'll see in a minute, she's quite creative. So that's where there's the, there's the clash. But her sister being the influencer, being, you know, sister Elizabeth being the influencer is stronger uh, than, uh, than Christina. Christina is the engager. And Christina is uh, more cautious with risk. Uh, she wants more family relationship and more connection, not that structured and driven. But she's looking for a role to play in the business and she's looking for identity. She likes freedom in decision-making. I think that's important. Use graphics and communications, not a lot of details. Um, and she wants some fun and excitement. So the real drive in the family unit is probably going to come from Elizabeth and, and more Christina is going to be the ideas person. And we see that down here from her creativity. She's uh, group orientated, so she wants to be included in the family unit. So, you know, what's interesting here is that we, that we see is that the children are generally a bit more group orientated, the mother is. Uh, so there is a chance here for this family uh, you know, to, to be a bit more interdependent and uh, collaborate together to make decisions and work together on the family business and with the family assets. Uh, Christina's less structured. She's more outgoing. She's likely to be a spender. So again, some governance controls on how much money uh, she gets, you know, income, capital from the family, uh, uh, from the family vault, if you want to call it that, uh, is important just for her own protection. So building in some family, some, some financial structure for Christina is important. Ultimately, in, in this family, the, the business was passed on uh, in terms of day-to-day -day control to the older sister, but Helen, uh, sorry, um, uh, Christina was involved in the business and she had a, uh, had a role and what the parents worked out uh, with, with the lawyers and, 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 and family discussions is uh, equity, for them in terms of not only stock, but also a uh, performance-based um, employment contracts for, for each of them. So they got remunerated based on what they contribute and their value. Here's where in, in the process that we uh, can use comparison reports. So in terms of a process, one of the steps that we follow is Firstly, that each person meets individually within the family unit. Um, and then with the, with the advisor, we, we get them to understand their own reports first. That's one-on-one -on -one meetings. Then we bring them together and have joint meetings. And that's where we use the comparison report to show them the differences, get them to talk about those differences. So here's what we would be doing for Tom and Kathy. There's quite a lot of differences, particularly around the risk and, and, what, and the way they had naturally worked out what to do there was to uh, invest their, their, their surplus cash flow separately because they like to invest in different things and that's stock documents. But generally speaking, the rest of it, they're on the same page. They're both quite financially structured. So that, this was the main uh, part of the conversation. And also in here was Kathy getting Tom to open up and to want to do the estate planning more in a relational way together, having family meetings. 
And here's uh, an extract from our deeper uh, comparison report that, that that just brings out the differences in the you know from at, at the factor level, and, and and you know we can see that Elizabeth being more the uh, um, outgoing uh, you know family member there. That's the difference to Tom, a bit more a bit more relational. Uh, so he's the initiator there. In, in style, and then and there's the other gap down here in terms of uh, creativity. And then we do the same with uh, the parents and the children. So here's a case study, uh, you know, comparison report of, of, of Tom and Eric. And again, we can see differences between father and son. It's good to get them talking. And uh, we, can, we can see that dad's been a bit more reflective and dad's a bit more driven uh, than, than his son. But getting them to value each other is important if you're going to uh, get everybody on the same page with the money. The relationship's strong, then the, the financial behaviors and functionality within the family will be pretty strong. So we do the same process with uh, Tom and Christina. For example, here, the younger daughter, we can see, we can see uh, some differences here. She's far more outgoing, uh, more social, a bit more of a spender. And then, you know, there's a pretty similar direction down here, even, even though Christina's not quite as much of a risk taker or as driven as a dad. The next part that we do is we, we bring everybody together for a family meeting once they're ready and we know that they're going to be able to have a conversation together and talk about the bigger issues. And, and what I do is uh, usually send the family a, a questionnaire to look at where, how they see the state of the family or across various topics, whether it's the state of the financial planning, wealth creation, what are their knowledge of the family assets, what do they want to do with philanthropy, uh, objectives with the business. And we, and, and, and we see where the consensus is on these big topics, where the issues might be. Uh, then we bring them together for a family meeting once we know, again, once we know that the family is healthy enough for that and they can, uh, you know, talk, talk with each other uh, uh, reasonably civilly, even though there will be differences. Conflict is okay, uh, so long as there's enough, uh, you know, foundational trust in the family unit, which, you know, we can build up uh, along the way through uh, greater understanding, acceptance and respect. So we, we then blend all the profiles together in, in, in a family group report. And this is then the uh, the outcome here. We can see that they're that, that they're all different, and and we talk about those differences uh, in 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 the family unit, in the family meeting, and how that uh, is going to parlay out in the uh, you know in the areas of uh, their relationships, how they're going to communicate with each other in the future, uh, the pass then the passing down of the business assets financial assets and the philanthropy. And this page here uh, just shows the, the differences in the, uh, the actual behavioral uh, factors. What I'll do in the, uh, the next recording uh, session is actually walk through the family group report so that you uh, see this uh, more uh, specifically. So this is the overall process that I've walked through for uh, taking a family through financial DNA. It's a layered approach starting with the patriarch and matriarch. They go through their individual reports. We meet with them. We then take the children through the individual reports. Then we have uh, some um, meetings where they come together, perhaps, you know, mum and dad together. We look at them to get together, parents and the children. And then we bring a, 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 a family meet, a full family meeting with everybody in the room uh, or online if uh, we can't get everybody uh, together in person. And, and we go through this and understand the decisions they're going to want to make and, and build their uh, future from the inside out. The important thing is, is that clarity builds trust and having conversations in their lifetimes is the most important thing. And to deal with any conflict that might come in person and resolve it that way and then uh, document the strategy again from the inside out. If you want to learn more about uh, the process, then uh, please read our book, uh, Family Trust uh, Strengthens Trust. It'll give you a good overview of everything I've said today.